Hello and welcome. Thank you all for being here today. I am Nick Kenoki, Director of Technology for the Asset Leadership Network, and I am very excited for today's program with Richard Dietz from the DC government. Before we get underway, I just want to thank our ALN Platinum organizational member, Onuma System, Building Informed Environments, as well as our patron members, uh, Jacobs Definitive Logic, ABS Quality Evaluations, and CGI and our other organizational members for making programming like this possible. Uh, and if you're interested in becoming an organizational member, reach out to anyone at the ALN and we can start the conversation. And with that, I think we will bring in Mike Bordenero, Executive Director for the ALN. Thank you, Nick. And how are things in Lander, Wyoming? Ah, excellent, cold, but beautiful. Now ask where I am. Where are you, Mike? I'm not in Chicago. I am in Alexandria, Virginia, in the Giuliani Associates Architects Studios. And we're very happy that uh, Mark Giuliani, an ALN senior fellow, is welcoming us to his uh, recording studio in Alexandria. And it just so happens that it's walking distance from the home of Richard Dietz. Hello, Richard. Hello, Mike. Good to see you again. Yeah. Good to see you. Thank you for having me. Richard has been a frequent guest and presenter at our live events. And uh, um, we're happy that he has some interesting news to share about what's happening at DC government. But we usually start the program by asking our guests to tell us about how they got where they're at in their asset management journey. But today we're going to ask Richard about the DC government's asset management jury journey as an organization. So Richard, can you tell us a little bit about the history of the DC government asset management journey? Of course, um, everyone's journey is gonna be different. Uh, our journey started eight years ago. So we're eight years into asset management um, and we're actually on our second asset management system. We have a lot of lessons learned along the way for us. Um, so, so our journey started with our leader, the office of the chief financial officer, um, had a problem, um, not enough money to go around, right? All the need of the city, um, was totaling up to around 14 billion, but all the funding that we have was roughly 8 billion. So that's a lot of no's. And that was a problem that, that was a problem that started our journey. Um, and that's how it began. Excellent. So what was the first step that uh, you took when you realized you needed to close this gap? So the first step for us was proof of concept, right? So we had, a, we had to prove that this problem could be solved, the problem of not enough funding. I mean, you, you really can't solve that, but you can get to the point where you can put the money to the highest need. And, and that's, that's what started the journey, having a problem, having to solve the problem was where we wanted to get to. So for us, we decided to choose um, a pilot program, you know, a small sample, you know, we're a city, the city of Washington, DC. So it's a big, big elephant of a problem to try to, to bite into. So we, we chose to start our journey with a, with a pilot, a small little niche. What was the pilot? Um, for us, the, the pilot was a small sample size. We actually chose schools. So DC public schools. The reason why we chose schools is several reasons. You know, schools represents a little mini city in a way. They've got their own fleet, right? School buses. They've got their own buildings, schools. Um, so it was a nice little sample size. Uh, 800 buses is a lot of buses, yeah, right? that's a lot of buses. Uh, 200 buildings is a lot of buildings, and that was our pilot. So we started with our pilot of, of the schools, and that's to solve the problem of not enough money. The pilot program of schools is, is what we chose to start with. And uh, you've got 100 departments in Washington, D.C. So once the pilot was successful, mm -hmm. how did you do the rollout? So, so right, there are, there are actually over 100 agencies, and, and, 
And everybody's asset management journey would be different, as I mentioned. For us, our asset management journey was capital, so it was capital projects. Um, and for us, there's 33 agencies that really participate in capital projects. You know, the Department of Transportation, so, you know, just does the roads and highways, Department of General Services that, that builds the buildings, or in the example of schools, DCPS schools. 33 agencies are the ones that make up our $14 billion need. So what we did and how we started, and there's many ways that you could start your journey, is, is we started with prioritization and scoring, right? Um, so we started with, with that. We also started with condition, um, condition of assets. So condition of your fleet. We're very fortunate in DC that we have a lot of data. We're data rich. So the data was all there. We just needed a system to dive in. Okay. And I understand there was a two-year uh, process of getting all the data into a uh, database. Is that uh, that that's correct? But um, it never ends. Uh, it it did take a long time to get the data in. The data was there. So once we pulled the data in, we see data holes. Um, data holes can be anywhere. If you're trying to uh, predict future replacement of a fleet vehicle, for example, you've got to have all the main components, the age, acquisition date, maintenance, mileage. Any one data gap in that, that data stream for a vehicle will cause a null. Um, I won't get a result. So, so the data was there. Trying to clean the data is the hardest part of our journey. And, and what I'm learning in our eight years of doing this is that journey never ends. You're constantly reviewing and scrubbing data. Things change. Um, you might go from motor vehicles to electric vehicles. And now you got to look at new data points. So just the fact of bringing up data, it is a never ending journey for us asset managers. So um, long story short, there was uh, improvements in understanding um, the assets, one of the things I remember uh, people talking about was there was a existing continuous order for fire truck tires that were coming once a month and, or, you know, so you were finding out what you had and controlling that better. But an unintended in, uh, a benefit was Moody's bond rating saw what you were doing and raised the rating mm -hmm. of DC government saving DC government a hundred million dollars over 10 years in interest alone. That's correct. That, that was actually a, a success. That was a win. Yes. Moody's increased our bond rating from AA to AAA. Um, that was a, the, in 2018. That was a very big one for us. And that was all because of our asset management um, systems and and how we're following them you know it was a group effort there are, there are many other people involved as well but that was a result of practicing good asset management so yeah and the asset leadership network was honored that you wanted to do more you had already started this then you you met us and dc government hosted the first aln a55k professional mm -hmm. certification class where you and i were, were both classmates and uh, so you've got well versed in the structure of ISO 55001. Mm -hmm. And there's so many parts of ISO 55001 mm -hmm. that I love. But mm -hmm. the last item is ISO 55001 10.3 continual improvement. And so you have hosting the class was part of your continual improvement. And mm -hmm. that has led to something exciting that you can announce that has happened uh, this week. Yeah, continual improvement. If you're going to go down this path, there's, there's, there's not a finish line. You're, you're always going to be trying to improve. And we've had so many lessons learned. Um, one of the lessons learned that is leading to this, this big announcement um, is communication of information. I needed to make simpler. I needed to make it visual. Uh, we needed a better business intelligence tool. Some people use uh, MicroStrategy, some people use Tableau, we're using Click. The big announcement that I like to make is we switch to a new asset management system. This new asset management system is visualization based. I can actually show 
through charts, diagrams, um, the entire condition of, let's say, the fleet. I could show the whole fleet of the District of Columbia in a single chart. So that's all fire trucks, all ambulances. And when I say I could show the whole fleet, I could show the condition. Good, fair, poor, average, uh, needing to be replaced. Not only can we do that with, with fleet, we can actually do that with buildings, with roads and highways, and with equipment. So I can visualize this data. That is the big announcement, is, is we're now a visualization on, on, on asset count, on asset condition, um, as well as expiration, future costs, um, prioritization. So we can do a, a whole um, slew of new things visually. So you don't have to read. Uh, I know that sounds kind of funny, but I, one of the lessons learned uh, through my journey is this is big data and trying to communicate big data needs to be done in tiny images. Uh, so that is the big success. I'm hoping to show you some of that a little later, but um, yes, very and, excited. And, and we don't mean to tease our audience, but we actually are just a little bit. This ALN Thursday at three is a discussion about what Richard will be presenting in a future program where you will be able to see the slides that he's talking about. But uh, this is keeping an eye out for when we announce that that is going to be happening. And one of the reasons that this continual improvement um, is taking place is there is very good leadership. Can you talk about the leadership at the office of the chief financial officer and some of the reasons why you wanted to expand this program? You're calling it new, but it's really an additional uh, benefit to what you're already doing. Right. So you, you keyed on leadership. Um, one, of the, one of the questions I always get asked is, how do you start? Um, you need leadership. You cannot do this without a leader. And, and for us, our leader was our chief financial officer, the highest position um, in, our, in our finance department. You have to have support from powers high above because you're going to run into obstacles. Um, you're going to run into data silos. You're going to run into things that will prevent progress. Um, you need a leader. Fortunately, um, our, when our asset management journey started eight years ago, it was started by the, the will of our, our finance office, and that opened up the doors for us to begin our journey. So, and it really took root because there has been change in that uh, chief financial officer, the top position, but the culture of asset management has continued, mm -hmm. and it was this culture that said, hey, we've got the numbers for all of the different departments and we can send spreadsheets, but we want to do more. Is that part of what contributed to this next step in your journey? Absolutely. That is certainly part of what contributed to the next step of the journey. And, and another part of it was just communicating big chunks of data. Uh, trying to get that message across to your readers. Um, sometimes I like to call them consumers, customers really, customers of the data. Yes. So my customers are not just the chief financial officer, but, but all of those 33 agencies that participate in the budget process, the, the decision makers, they're customers too. They're the peoples that make the decision of, of what project should get funded or what project shouldn't. Um, communicating the information to those decision makers was also a reason why we switched over to the new system. Okay, so you had a very powerful uh, data system and the numbers were in there and Excel spreadsheet is a visual program. Your eyes see the numbers in the cell, but it's just not very intuitive. So there was this power at the departments, but they weren't really able to take advantage of it, were they? When, that's correct. They're, they're, the visualization of the data, the communication of the data is definitely something that you need to make easier to your consumers. Um, so that was a, a big reason for, for moving, because moving to the new system. 
because what I'm finding is large chunks of data through through spreadsheets can be messy. Trying to communicate the message concisely, um, visually is how I found the message to be more powerful. Mm -hmm. um, simple colors like a red, yellow, green, orange, they can apply to fleet, they can apply to buildings, roads and highways. Um, and they, they convey uh, the message of how good you're doing. Am I, am I exceptionally well? That means that, you know, you're in the green range, or if I'm going to fail, I'm in the red range. Uh, those are easier ways to communicate our condition um, as opposed to numbers and values in a spreadsheet. Yes, but of course, those uh, uh, red, yellow, green are based on the numbers, so it's uh, clear communication to assist non-expert decision makers in getting to the point where they might have to change a little bit of the way they act, but it's clear to them if they want to get in the green, they need to do something different. That's true. So um, tell us a little bit about your aspiration for the, the more intuitive add-on to the program that may help the departments take over management or presentation of their own data? Um, so aspirations. Um, I have a lot of aspirations as far as the asset management data goes. And, and to me, my aspiration is a web-based program where agencies have access, and, and these are the decision makers as well that have mm -hmm. access to the agency data real time, it's, it's live, it's connected directly to their data source. You could see things as simple as um, asset count. How many, how many vehicles do I have? It is my aspiration uh, to produce a condition booklet of all the assets and their condition, you know, where they are in their useful life um, of all assets. And that gets to a definition of what a capital asset is, but we have our own but where they are, how, how well are you? How long will you expire? How much will it cost to take you to be replaced? And, and present that transparently. So you could see maybe there's 20 million of ambulances that you need to purchase over the next six years. You'll be able to see individually all of those ambulances that make up that individual total of 20 million. There's no more guessing. You're knowing exactly what you're getting. You know what it costs. Excellent. So um, I uh, had the privilege of uh, a sneak preview yesterday. I was near Richard's office and I ran into Richard on the street and was able to go up and he gave me a preview of what will be in our next presentation, which is the, the visuals that go along with what Richard is describing now. We've got John in Iowa in uh, Des Moines saying that he's going to share this video with his city manager, but I recommend that you wait until the next program and share both this discussion and the visual uh, presentation. So what I saw was the ability to project out how many uh, ambulances were needed over the next 10 years. And the number of, and the costs too. And you could see that the number of projected ambulances for today was similar to the number projected in 10 years. However, mm -hmm. when you flipped over to the cost, obviously it's going to cost 2 million extra to get the same number of ambulances 10 years from now because you have all kinds of uh, cost calculations, escalations that are built in. Correct, inflation. Mm -hmm. So a uh, powerful set of uh, visualization, but also calculation tools. Mm -hmm. What are some of the other features that you're enjoying with the new add-on program? So, so to list the features, um, so the new program, it does the same as the old. It's the same calculations, a difference is visualization. It's a business intelligence tool. The ability to communicate complex activities, um, especially for if you have, for us, we're a city. There's, there's $14 billion of assets. 
um, that I'm trying to communicate condition on. That is a lot of data. I was unsuccessful in the old system because I could not visualize it. I could not, uh, the, the tool was limited to what I could do. The new tool can, and it is a big lesson learned uh, visualization will get you a lot farther. One of the lessons learned is people's attention spans are short. You've got to get that impact, that presentation, that decision. You've got to give the decision makers the information they need to make a decision. And that's one of the biggest things I'm excited about with this, with this new system, the ability to communicate complex information in a, in a very concise, short format. Excellent. So um, what kind of feedback are you getting from people who are seeing this? So we go live this week. Um, so the feedback is, is going to be happening um, in the next budget season. So what we're creating, you all are getting a sneak peek uh, before, before everybody else. Um, but it is the feedback after seven years we're in our eighth year i'm just starting eighth but after the seven years of combined um demands requests of what a system should be for us put it all into this new system i'm very excited to be um, bringing it out uh, very shortly so um, i'm going to put you on the spot a little bit here and uh ask you to uh predict some outcomes what do you think is going to start happening with the departments and how do you think this is going to affect city council and maybe even mayor decisions so what i'm hoping is more involvement in in other activities so we're right now uh, we're focused on the capital budget so there there's a lot of other areas where we can expand um, condition assessments um, and 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 looking at other areas but uh, I'm hoping for future expansion to bring the value of, of, of condition, replacement, expiration, future expirations um, to other areas within the city. Some other areas that you could go into, you know, deferred costs, um, consequences of inaction. You know, if I don't do something, what does that, what does that, what is that impact? Um, if you don't do something today, we all know it's going to be 3% more tomorrow but that's just because of the factor of inflation. But there's more to it than that. There's, there's the operating cost today. If you did not replace all of those vehicles today that you're supposed to do, you're gonna need your increased operating budget to maintain that one vehicle that was supposed to be replaced. So I'm hoping that the future, there, there's, there's, there's so much opportunity, but one of the opportunities that I'm hoping to expand upon is deferred cost, um, consequences of inaction, all on unmet need. Excellent. So uh, this is a very exciting time, and I'm really glad that you are sharing uh, your enthusiasm with us. And uh, um, the rollout hasn't occurred you know, fully to the departments, but your leadership has seen the reports. What kind of feedback are you getting from the those inside leaders? So the feedback that I'm getting from inside is positive. And, and, and again, it's the ability to convey the message is so much uh, more easily digestible. Uh, the ability to put the entire fleet. Now, now you got to keep in mind, we're a city. Um, Simple things like how many police cars do I have? How many fire trucks do I have? Um, it sounds simple, but it is a changing number. Um, the ability, and we're, we're connected live to the data source, so the ability just to even see what is my vehicle count? You know, what is the condition of the vehicles? All in real time is the positive feedback that I'm getting. Um, and there's there's just so much potential of room for more growth which is very exciting um so well we really appreciate you coming in today we appreciate what dc government office of the chief financial officer has been doing 
and how much you're willing to share your success with others so there is an encouraging message to start or advance your asset management journey. And before we go to Nick, which will uh, be shortly, I do want to thank Mark Giuliani and Giuliani Associates Architects. They have been such strong supporters of the Asset Leadership Network. They have helped us bring our technology and our programming to a higher level. And we don't always give them the, the shout out that they deserve. So thank you to uh, Mark and his crew here in Alexandria. We will be having a uh, recording with Richard. It's not gonna be live. And then we'll present that recording as a program, probably on a Tuesday at three. And we'll let you all know about that. And we'll try to do that soon so that it's, it's fresh in your, your minds and you can connect what Richard is talking about, the leadership activities to the actual boots on the ground visualization that he's been describing. So Nick, if you can come in. And before you do the wrap up, uh, how do things look like in this virtual world? Because we're sitting in, in a green sc screen stage. We've got lights all in front of us and uh, it's, it's quite spectacular on this end. How do things look there? Oh, great. Uh, a lot more, uh, a lot, it's a, a lot more dynamic than I would say any Zoom meeting I've ever attended. So uh, that's a good thing. Um, and uh, I saw a question from Cecilia, but uh, Mike, do you want to briefly address that before we close or shall I just say? I'll, I'll, I'll ask, I'll, I'll ask uh, Richard, can you share how this knowledge has been integrated into increasing service equitability? Increasing service equitability. That's, that's so wide. And so broad. Oh, so Mike, I mean, that could be equitability, equal access into a building. ADA is what comes to my mind. So surface equity, equitability would mean identifying all the ADA issues to get those fixed. So everybody, whether you're handicapped or not, can get into a building. That's equity to me. That can be identified in this new system by using the uniformat, which is a standard of how you can look at condition assessments for a building. I can pull out ADA and I can make a capital program, a six year program to a uh, capital budget plan, not a program, a six year pro, uh, plan to fix all ADA related issues for equity of whether you have um, a mobility issue, you can, regardless of, of, of if you do or not, you can now all get into the building um that's an example of equity. that's an excellent example um yeah richard and i want to highlight something that um dave clark who is not, is he your direct boss but a leader in the he's a leader a leader in the office of the uh chief financial officer said when he first started talking with me about dc government every four years pennsylvania avenue is perfect they pave it and it's ready for the inaugural parade and it's wonderful. Why shouldn't every street <laughs> in DC have that same treatment on a same amount, not the same amount, on the same schedule? And that's part of their aspiration is to bring that perfect street to every seat street in DC. And so that's about as equitable uh, a statement. You know, I wish Dave was here to say that, but I, I, I don't mind repeating what he said. So Nick, can you take us home? Yes. Um, yeah, thank you all for joining us today for a slightly different style of program. Um, but thank you especially to our Platinum Organizational Member Onuma System and our other patron members. We couldn't do programming like this in our newsletter without you, uh, as well as all our organizational members. We are continually grateful. And if you're interested in working with us and maybe becoming an organizational member, reach out and we will start 
figuring out how we can help you and you can help us. Um, and with that, I'll say catch us next week at Thursday at three. And look for our newsletter to find out when the pre-recorded program with Richard will air. It'll be this month. We'll make it this month. Okay. Thank you all. And I'm going to leave the webinar going for, I think, Mark's closing credits. Thank mm -hmm. you.